Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're going to discuss and review this god roll shotgun, and it's called the Balagant XU, blah blah blah, nobody really cares, and so for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna say that this thing right here is the year 2 Balagant. The main reason as to why we're doing this video is because I've been getting a ton of questions as to what exactly it is that I've been using for a shotgun in my past couple of comp videos. And so lo and behold, the answer to this is of course the year 2 Valiant. Not only is this thing a monster and devastator in PvP, but it is certainly 110% my go-to shotgun in competitive. And that right there, my friends, is saying a lot. But the next question that we have to ask ourselves is why? That Dia Slayers is the million dollar question, and the answer as to why is because when I did a little bit of a shotgun testing video a couple of weeks ago whenever this brand new shotgun nerf just arrived, I discovered that the aggressive frame shotguns were dominant, and they were doing much much better than say something like a precision frame weapon, aka a Dust Rock Blues. A wide variety of other tests were done, including the weapon's muzzle break, and more specifically, on full choke. And I discovered that full choke was no longer the way to go, and as to why that is, is what we're going to get into in this video. But not just this, we're also going to cover all the weapon's base stats, its overall lethality, its range factor, what its optimal range actually is, and a beautiful and spectacular side-by-side -side comparison of this weapon along with the Toyo and Trouble shotgun, because these two things are uncannily similar, and as to find out how all this is being done, that's what we're going to get into right now. To find out as to exactly what kind of god roll that you're looking for on this Balagan or a Toyo and Trouble, the only thing left to do is to eviscerate that notification button, and let's jump right into the video. It's at this point in time that I normally go over a weapon's lethality, and in particular, it's TTK. But because both the Balagan and the Toil and Trouble are shotguns, their TTKs are instant. Instead, I want to let you guys know as to exactly what I particularly happen to have on this Balagan shotgun. And as you guys can tell from right there, this thing is not only classified as an aggressive frame, but it's also got small bore, accurized rounds, slide shots, and moving targets. With the aggressive frame R-type shotgun, the shotgun is hard hitting, has higher recoil, and gives the shotgun an increased rate of fire after a kill. That in particular fact is very very important, but moving on, I want to also mention that with small bore, the weapon gains plus 7 range and plus 7 stability, while accurized rounds gives the shotgun another plus 10 in range. Next is Slide Shot, and Slide Shot states that sliding partially reloads the weapon's magazine and temporarily boosts range and stability. Lastly, with moving targets, the weapon gains increased movement speed and target acquisition when moving while aiming down sights. When you couple this with the fact that this thing has a plus 10 range masterwork and an Icarus mod, not only will this Balagant have superb one-shot range potential, but will have a glorious in-air accuracy, making the enemy guardians a little bit salty. Before we go any further, I actually just want to take one step back and explain as to what we're looking for on shotguns, and then you'll understand better as to why this particular role that I have on this Balagant is the definition of a god role. So the main thing that we're looking for is number one, increase in range, because range is ultimately going to give us a larger one-shot kill distance, but more importantly, that's also going to affect each pellet and how much that pellet is going to have a bullet of magnetism towards the enemy target. For those of you that don't know what bullet magnetism is, it's actually how far that you can miss a particular shot and still have the game register that that shot is landing. And the reason why this is so vital and pivotal on almost every single shotgun is because the vast majority of them is a pellet spread. And with pellet spreads, it has an RNG spread as to exactly where all those pellets are going to land, and so we want to have a weapon that's going to have a higher tendency to have more of those pellets hit. This then leads me into my next point, and that is the how exactly we're going to actually increase this weapon's overall aim assistance regardless of whether or not we're actually in the air, or we're sliding, or we're running, or whatever the case may be. With small bore, accurized rounds, and slide shots, I have three perks in this weapon that are going to increase the weapon's overall effective range. And in addition to this, I also happen to have moving targets. And of course, that's then going to increase the weapon's overall strafing speed, but more importantly than that is the target acquisition, causing more pellets to actually hit their targets. Furthermore, taking into account the plus 10 range masterwork, this thing you guys can clearly tell has some excellent synergy from not just the perk, but also the mods and of course the masterwork too. 
I think it's a fair assessment to say that this thing right here is the definition of a god roll. But there are many other god rolls that you guys might also get, and that includes a different variety of different perks. And so what I want to do next is I want to cover all the weapons perks, and as you guys can see from right there, here's all the weapons perks that you guys can actually get on this particular Balagant. So let me just go ahead and start off by saying as to exactly what perk that you guys should be looking for in that very first barrel column. And the three barrel options that I would recommend are rifle barrel, small bore, and corkscrew rifling. With rifle barrel, you're going to get a plus 10 increase in range, but at the same time, you're also going to have a significant decrease in the weapon's overall handling speed by a minus factor of 15. Now, I don't know about you nor your particular playstyle, but for those of you who have very, very aggressive playstyles like mine, I can guarantee you that that decrease in handling speed, aka aim down sight time, is not going to be what you're actually looking for. And so that's why I would actually recommend instead that you go for a small bore. Because with small bore, you're not going to have a decrease in any other base stat, but rather you're only going to have an increase of plus 7 in the range and the stability of plus 7 as well at the exact same time. So if you were to ask me, small bore is 110% the best option in this column. But if you don't happen to get that particular perk, then the other one that I would look for is Corkscrew Rifling. Because with that perk, you're going to get a plus 5 increase in not just range, but also the weapon stability and handling speed simultaneously. Once again, we're not going to have any kind of decrease in any other base stat like what you would happen to have with Rifle Barrel. And the only other thing that I want to mention here in this particular column is that you do not, I repeat, you do not want to have Full Choke. Before the previous range update a couple of months ago, Full Choke was easily the best option to have here, and that's because what it did is it compressed the overall pallet spread, making it more condensed, and thus making the shotgun overall more consistent. Unfortunately, Bungie did something with Full Choke, and I'm not exactly sure as to what they really did. But all I can say is that the range factor has gone down significantly, and that also means that the one-shot kill distance has gone down drastically, and that is not what we want at all. Understanding that, the very next thing that I want to cover is actually that second column of perks with this Balagant. And as you guys can see from right there, the first one up top is called Assault Mag, followed by the second one, which is Accurize Rounds, and the last one, which is Light Mag. Of these three perks, the best one that I can recommend for this specific column is Accurize Rounds, because that's going to increase the weapon's overall effective range by 10, and not have any kind of deficit in any other base stat whatsoever. On the other hand, RNG may not be so kind, and so you might want to look for two other perks, which is specifically Light Mag and Assault Mag. And the reason why I would recommend Light Mag is because that's going to give you a boost in two base factors. Number one, range by plus five, and number two, reload by plus ten. Remember, we're always looking for perks that are going to increase the weapon's overall effective range. But because this weapon is also an aggressive frame weapon, it's then going to have an increase in the weapon's rate of fire as soon as you happen to get that one kill. And so this is actually why I recommend the other perk, or rather I should say the last perk, and that's Assault Mag. Because what Assault Mag can do is it's going to increase, number one, the weapon's rate of fire by plus 10, and secondly, it's then going to increase the weapon's overall stability factor by plus 15. As far as the other perks go in this particular column, well, let's just say that the rest of them are pretty much muff cabbage trash shenanigans, and I wouldn't recommend any of them. But what I can recommend, at least for that third column of perks, is Air Assault, along with Slide Shot, and of course, Full Auto Trigger System. Air Assault is pretty much a brand new perk that came out in the Black Armory DLC, and what it does is it increases the weapon's handling speed while airborne. If you're like myself, then you know for a fact that this is going to come into play, especially in the competitive scene because a lot of shotgun engagements are happening in one of two ways. And that's either in the air, thus air assault is going to come into play, or that's in the ground by sliding, and that's when the second perk that I recommend is going to come into play, and that's slide shot. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that if you have an aggressive playstyle, then slide shot is an absolute must-have perk on any shotgun, and that's because you're going to be getting into a lot of close-range quarters, and of course you want to stay maneuverable. And that's then going to entail sliding on a very regular basis, which is then going to proc slide shot, and so at the same time, you're then going to increase the weapon's overall range factor, while at the exact same moment, you're still going to get more bullets back into the magazine, allowing you to get double, triple, and potentially a team wipe, and when that's the case, enemy guardians are going to get annihilated, eradicated, and decimated, and that I can guarantee. 
Once again, RNG is going to be a huge factor in this column of perks. And so if you don't happen to get slide shots, then what I would also recommend here is full auto trigger system. Because what that's going to do is it's going to get the weapon a full auto mentality. And that's then going to allow you to simply hold on the trigger and fire off as many pellet shotgun spreads as you possibly can. I want to move on to that fourth column of perks. As you guys can tell from right here, there's almost none that you can go wrong with because this thing has rampage, snapshot, moving targets, and auto-loading holster. The only one that I wouldn't recommend here is Outlaw, and that's because in a lot of cases, you're not actually going to be hitting critical headshots with these types of pellet spread shotguns. And that's why I would then recommend one of the other four, because with Rampage, that's going to come into effect and get the weapon overall damage output on that second kill, thus increasing the weapon's overall effective range at the exact same time. With Snapshot, the weapon is going to have some superb aim down sight time speeds, and that's then going to make the weapon very, very snappy. But you also might happen to get moving targets, and you already know what that does. But lastly, Auto Lane Holster is then going to be very, very effective once again for an aggressive playstyle. A portion of the weapon's overall magazine size after a short period of time of not using it. With that, I think that you guys now have a fairly good understanding as to how each one of these perks is then going to function on the Belegant. And so just to kind of recap everything, here's all the perks that I would recommend right there on screen. The role that I have is Small Bore, Accurate Rounds, Slide Shot, and Moving Target, which once again is the definition of a God role. But there are a lot of other roles that you might want to get here. Because for example, you might want to have, say, Rifle Barrel, along with that of Accurized Rounds, Slide Shot, and say, Moving Target. If that's the case, then this weapon's going to have an overall effective range factor that's going to be ever so slightly greater than that of the one that I happen to have, while at the same time, overcoming the deficit from that minus 15 in handling speed due to Rifle Barrel, because you're going to have Snapshot on that, and it's going to counteract it beautifully. Now at the very beginning of the video, what I also mentioned is that I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison analysis with this weapon and the Toil and Trouble and all the perks that it can actually roll with. And so as you guys can tell from right here, these two weapons are almost identical because on the left we happen to have the Balgan and all the perks that it can get, but on the right we have the Toil and Trouble and all the perks that it can get. There is only one significant difference between these two weapons, and that is that on the Balgan via the left side, we see that the red circle there is covering the one perk called Air Assault. And unfortunately, we cannot get that perk on the Toil and Trouble. But other than that, these two things are seriously identical and they have absolutely zero difference whatsoever. Thus, all the rules that you might potentially get on the Balgant, you could also then potentially get on the Toil and Trouble. And so it doesn't matter which one of these two things that you guys actually get. As long as you get one of them, you're then going to have a very good shotgun. As long as it happens to have some good perks, they're going to have some great synergy to thus be able to use in PvP. This actually then brings me to my next topic, and that is, how do you guys actually get your hands on both of these two weapons? For a Balgant, all you have to simply do is go into the new forges and hope and pray that RNG is going to be kind to you and maybe just get lucky enough to actually have one of these things drop. But a much more likely case to actually get this weapon, or rather I should say the Toil and Trouble, is to simply grind a ton of Vanguard Strikes. And eventually, you're then going to have enough tokens to then be able to turn it into Zavala, and maybe if RNG is kind enough, you're then going to have a significantly greater chance of getting the Toil and Trouble, because you know for a fact that every single one of those drops of your Zavala is of course going to at least give you something. Now, if you still haven't quite decided as to which one that you really want to grind for, then I have something else that's really going to help make that decision very, very clear, or at least that's what you would think, and that is to look at the weapon space stats. As you guys can tell from right here, here's a side-by-side -side comparison analysis of the Balgan on the left and its base stats in contrast to that of the Toil and Trouble and its base stats on the right. To my surprise, and I'm sure to yours as well, the Toil and Trouble actually has a ton of base stats that are ever so slightly better than that of the Balgan. You're going to notice that the blue highlighted characters are clearly indicating that the Toil and Trouble is better than the Balagant, or that the Balagant is better than the Toil and Trouble in some of these circumstances. But just be aware that each one of these differences is very, very minute, and in the case of range, that difference is only by two. In the case of the aim assistance, the difference is once again only by two. And arguably, those are two some of the most important stats that you guys really need to focus on here. And as far as everything else goes, well, I'll let you guys dictate as to how important that they actually are. In the end, 
I think that it's a fair assessment to say that each one of these two shotguns, at least in terms of their base stats, are very, very similar. Because of course, they happen to have the same rate of fire, the same impact, and all those kinds of things. And on top of that, they are in the exact same R-type via the aggressive frame. So if you're wondering which one of these two things is actually better than the other, that is really just coming down to the weapon's perks and the perk synergy that each one of these two things has. Just to take this one step further and really prove to you as to how effective this thing can actually be, what I did next is I went into a private match with my very good friend White Leopard and I tested out the weapon's overall effective range. Now remember that this thing happens to have small bore, accurized routes, slide shot, moving targets, and the plus 10 range masterwork, giving it an overall effective range at 55. But these tests do not take into account the range increase from slide shot since I'm not actually sliding. After seeing these initial tests at 7 meters and 8 meters, you guys can already tell that this thing is number one inconsistent. And that's because all shotguns have a natural innate ability to be just that, inconsistent. And that's due to the weapon and its pellet spread being randomized. However, what you can also take away is that not only is this going to be a guaranteed one-shot kill most likely from 7 meters, but also from 8 meters. And so the next thing that I'm testing is a 9 meter range. And so as you guys can see from right here, that is of course, again, inconsistent, but it does happen to kill at 9 meters. By taking the Darcy and measuring via the critical headshot and as to how far that distance actually is, I can then tell that this thing and its measurements are precise. And so then when I go to 10 meters, you guys can clearly tell that that and its distance is simply not enough to actually down a Guardian at that overall 10 meter range. All in all, what I want you to take away from this testing is that this Balakin shotgun with its specific role is certainly gonna be able to down you at nine meters. But also note that that range actually might increase even more so if you happen to proc slide shot in the appropriate manner. And last but not least, I also want you to take one more note, and that is that all the test cases that you guys just saw was done with a Guardian that only had one resilience, which as you know, is very, very low. After taking all these things into account, I think that it's a fair assessment to say that you now know as to what exactly makes a god roll balagant, but not just this, a god roll toil in trouble, since they are almost the exact same weapon, not just in terms of their perks, but also in terms of their base stats. And not just that, but you also know that this thing has the potential to down a guardian at 9 plus meters, and that is some invaluable knowledge since you're going to be using this thing most likely in competitive, and I can attest that you definitely need every single advantage that you can possibly get. Now I'm sure that many of you have already gotten some god rolls yourselves, and so by all means, I want to hear all about those god rolls on not just the Balagant, but the Toil and Trouble down in the comment section below, and I can't wait to see as to exactly what you guys already got. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media, because you are the greatest. That's pretty much all I've got for you as of right now, DS Layers, and as always, GG TNT.